Hello, welcome to Seagull Social, Season 3, Episode 20, Happy New Year, one and all. Um, it was a pretty poor end to 2023 in terms of results, but I guess we we ended the game well in terms of performances. Um, so yeah, obviously we'll talk a bit more of that in the episode. I am, of course, joined by Maz and Ryan. Maz, Happy New Year, how are you doing? Thank you very much. Yeah, great, mate, great. Um, got to get to the Amex, which obviously, as you all know, is a bit tough for me. So getting down to the Amex was really nice. I was... <laughs> Surprising. I was like, this is class. I was in the away end with the boys, uh, with Ben and his mob. Uh, I was in the away end. I was like, yeah, uh, not away end. Sorry. North Stand, yeah. North Stand, sorry, yeah. I don't know why I said the away end. Uh, I was in the North Stand. I was like, yeah, this is great. This is amazing. And then literally a minute in, we conceded. I was like, is this what I've come, is this what I've come back for? Uh, is this what? I, is this really what's going on? Um, but yeah, no, it was class, it was class to be at the stadium. Um, and it was, it was like, the atmosphere was actually really good up until, I suppose, when we conceded, I suppose. Mm. Like the, the buzz was really good. And then, yeah, as soon as we conceded, it went a bit flat. But uh, yeah, I thought second half, we, we were great, um, which I'm sure we'll get into. But no, nah, mm. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the, the year. And um, hopefully we can push for Conference League or Europe this year. So yeah, that's imagine my, if we're playing, imagine if we're playing European football by the end of the, by the end of the year. That'd be nice. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Ryan, how was your, how did you enjoy the game? What did you get up to yesterday? Did you have a good new year? Yeah, no, I was I was definitely there because um, you know <laughs> season ticket things, but no, it's good. So I I think the second half was a lot better, but you know I think first half was to be expected. I I, I do you know what I was really um, really upset with a lot of our fans, if I'm honest. Like the the reactions that we got on Twitter was it was just a shame. Really, I've already seen I, it. I that what did you played, say? I just saw a lot of like abuses, particularly towards our young players, and you know I saw a lot towards Colwell and Gilmore, particularly. Um, I put on a thing about Gilmore; thought played quite well, um, yeah, but so. clearly people didn't people didn't agree with that. I don't, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know how, but we'll get into that in a bit. But I thought, yeah, second half we made a decent account of ourselves. That we had an average age of amongst six players about nineteen years old, right? So to um, you know to come against the league leaders without Caicedo, without McAllister, and have a makeshift team and you know, filled with a bunch of youth players. I thought we made a good account of ourselves and it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of, that's for sure. Yeah, mm. no, that's true. There were a lot, a lot of young players on for us. I know they, I don't know, Arsenal have got like the youngest uh, squad age on average, yeah, I think, in the league. But um, yeah, that's yeah. a very good point to be fair. Like we did have a lot of young talent on there and to come away with a 4-2, 4-2 loss, scoring two goals against them. I mean, you take it. Of, of course, Matoma's one just inches offside and I suppose we'll talk about the fact that he came he wasn't even running like you said Ryan it wasn't even an advantage he was coming back no. and then then it will happen so I don't know I'm, yeah. I'm not asking for them to change the rule just for Brighton but it's, it's a bit it's a bit heartbreaking when that sort of, sort of thing it happens. seems weird doesn't um, it because you know you've, you've not really gained anything out of it if you know what I mean like, no. it's not like, it's not like we've but I, I don't know I guess offside's offside so I can't complain and it, it yeah. applies to everyone but it just seems particularly harsh particularly as there's a lot more of the play to go until Matoma, Matoma actually took on the shot. Um, I, I don't know, but it is what it is. It, you know, 4-3, mm. maybe that game could have been different. We could have even seen a 4 all um, the way we were I going. Do, I do think, know, but... I think, I, I, I might be just sound like a really bitter fan, but I reckon at least three of the goals, Arsenal goals, could have just not happened. Especially, like, I think like San, yeah, yeah. Sanchez was very avoidable with the two like errors that he made. Even the first one, like, I guess in the West Ham, Ryan, how disappointed were the people around you that we conceded within the first minute? Like, it must have been like, for fuck's sake, like, such a decent yeah. build up, and then already we're 1 0 down against top of the league. Yeah, and I think that, you know, when you give Saka that much space, I mean, you were asking for it, aren't you? As I say, though, I just felt because obviously we're missing these key players, and it sounds like I'm some sort of Manchester United fan making excuses or something, but, you know, they are such key players. And when, you, when you've got. You know, Billy Gilmore, his cover, as I've mentioned, he's, he's what, 21? And to then pin everything onto him to make it OK when you've got, you know, a World Cup winner and players, and Caicedo has obviously been talking about for like 80 million to Liverpool. It's like, how can you then expect Gilmore to come in and do the same job when he's barely played mm. football for us? I just, you know, I, as I say, there was massive gaps in that midfield in the first half, but... It was so noticeable, but as we say, we, we grew into it. And I think that um, it was to be expected, but obviously the, the naivety perhaps of losing that quality and then going behind so early on was just a bit of a kick in the confidence, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? It was the fact that we lost, like you said, those two players, they, they went, Caicedo and McAllister are so good at winning the ball back. 
And it's just, just you, if you think about that first mm. goal, we lost the ball and Odegaard's just running out the defence and there's no one that's going to make a ball recovery at all. Um, yeah, Maz, what did you kind of make of that first goal? Where did you kind of see it all going wrong? Yeah, the, the, yeah, the midfield for me was just non-existent, essentially. They just walk through and I think that that's where we lost the game, right? It was Partey, Jacker, and Odegaard just ran that midfield. Odegaard like, was so good. Yeah, yeah we just, we just didn't have... So. We didn't have an answer to we didn't have an answer to their to their midfield. That, that that's where it was lost. And I know Ryan's mentioned uh, Caicedo and McAllister, but and it seems so obvious. Obviously, you lose your two essentially, arguably our best players. Two of our best players have gone out the yeah. team. So it's like, of course, you're going to struggle against the league leaders. And in that first goal, yeah, I just felt it was just way too easy. Um, and Saka just yeah had a lot of time space, and it was it was it was a decent finish. We were literally right behind the goal, weren't we, Ben? So like mm. you could see it just nestle into the goal and I was just like for fuck's sake like, why, why why can we just like I think what we need is I know this obviously says it's much easier said than done but I think if we just kept compact and you know for the first 15 minutes just frustrated Arsenal we potentially the game could have gone a completely different way but mm. I think straight from the off they were just on the front foot we were on the back foot we invited the pressure and Odegaard and Martinelli and Saka just gave us big problems and of course Nke- Nketiah scored later on as well but their front four just gave us a lot of problems all, all night long really um, it was so weird seeing Arsenal good. play well though wasn't it just seeing an Arsenal team play that good and being that yeah. dominant is because normally like you said we're kind of their bogey team so to see them mm. really really play well against us is a bit of a surprise um, yeah. and then yeah I guess yeah, Odegaard's I goal that's probably the only one that I can kind of give them credit for <laughs> if I'm not being bitter yeah, I, I, mate, they they were they were good. Like the first sort of thirty minutes, they they were strong. They were good, and I, I was I was thinking, you know, Ben White, he's just an absolute machine. He really is. He was and, good. And, yeah. Do you know he what? Cool. I am I am happy for him, and I, and I I don't agree with the people that boo him, and I, and I really don't I don't like that. But when you're up against him, you realise how good he is, and it was it was one of those. And I I thought when he went off, actually, we had a lot more joy. Um, because he was he was great, and uh, to be honest with you, I, I um I respect him for not putting anything on his Instagram. I was expecting like a black and white image with Dunk on the floor. Or <laughs> black and white. Uh, he he has more class. It's okay, but um no, no he was he was fantastic, Ben White. I've got to be yeah. honest. I couldn't uh, hear I... any booze when he when he they had, the squad had, well, I to fair, I was still yeah. in the concourse when they were announcing the team lineup, but well, there weren't any booze for him, were there this time? Uh, no, I don't, I don't a little bit so. in north, but that's about it, really. Was it? Oh, was it? Yeah, because oh. weirdly, we actually had this debate like in the stands. There were like a few people around us were like, "Oh, like oh, you know," when he was getting off a few. We, there was a few by us that were going, "Oh, like, get off the pitch, blah blah." And then there was like a few people sort of going, "Like, why, why are you angry at him?" Like, and someone made a really good point. It's like you're going mm. to better yourself. You're going to a bigger club, more money, um, and and also, in my opinion, he left with integrity, man. Right. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was about to say. I don't think he yeah. left with any bitter little like emotions or any kind of. I personally don't think he left in a bad way, but maybe some fans do. No. I don't know why, but um, yeah, it's just interesting to see. Like you said, Ryan. Like there's there seems to be a lot of people that obviously don't mind him leaving or you know that don't really have any qualms, but then there's a few that mm. are a bit, a bit bitter and angry, which I personally don't get because. He he was a great servant yeah. for us, and we got we got a very good fee. You got to remember fifty million for Ben White. Like, yeah. you take that all day long. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a player that I was surprised that I kind of was a bit disappointed in. I will say disappointment's probably a bit too much of a harsh word, but like Lamptey, I felt like he left our defence quite shaky, mm. more because they were so yeah. good at countering us. But I just felt you can tell the difference between when Veltman's playing right back and Lamptey's playing right back. I feel like maybe Veltman would have been the good one to play against Arsenal because he's so much more solid defensively. Uh, yeah, I just feel like Lampsy maybe got done or was, was a bit out of caught out cool position a few times. Yeah, yeah. going forward, I think Lampsy's class, it's just, yeah, tracking back. Obviously, I know Martinelli's very quick, but you know when he got mm. for the fourth goal when Martinelli, obviously we were three, it was 3-1 at the time and we looked like we were about to score another one to make it 3-2 with that Samiento pullback. Yeah. And then they literally went about two minutes later and went down the other end and Martinelli scored. And it was just a bit like, yeah, could could Lamptey have done better there? I don't know. Did he just get outpaced? But I remember saying, I turned around to someone and I was like, since that injury, I feel like he's he's lost a yard of pace. And I feel like since that 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 injury he had, I don't think he's as quick as we maybe remember him. Because there was a few times where they were like Martinelli was gassing him, or you know Saka was gassing him, or whoever it might have been, he was he was on, he was getting gassed, and it's like you you never think like a year ago when you thought you know Lamptey would get gassed by anyone, let alone. Mm. 
the Martinelli, Sackers and stuff like that. So I don't know, maybe, yeah, we probably are being a bit harsh, to be honest, because I don't think he was terrible or I don't think he no. had a bad game. But I, I can I get where you're coming from with regards to defensively, he's not as solid as Veltman, whereas going forward, he he's obviously, in my opinion, better than Veltman going forward. Yeah. It's not as good defensively. Uh, nice Brian, risk for De Zerbi to, to like take, though, I think, playing a more of attacking wing back against a team like yeah. Arsenal, though. Yeah, I, I think he was thinking about pace, wasn't he? Um, yeah. Lamptey, mm. I think. Yeah, right. Do you see any? Do you agree anything? I, I just, I think my trouble is I find it the whole game, no matter who you criticise, is going to be harsh, because I think that, you know, obviously it was it was such a a tough game to lose such key players, and obviously I, I get what Deserbi was trying to do right. He's put Deser- he's put uh, Lamptey in there to cope with Martinelli because Martinelli is outrageous on his day, as everyone everyone knows, right? And I thought actually for the first sort of twenty five minutes he coped quite well. I think in the second half, probably when we were pushing higher because we sensed the fact we might yeah. get something, that's when we got exposed. And then I guess that's when Lamptey's visible. And I think that it's a bit like what I was saying with Gilmore earlier. is visible in the first half because he wasn't used to not having anyone around him. And it was, it was just all on Gilmore. It's on a 21-year-old that's barely played. So it's like you, you can see Gilmore's mistakes then and you can see Tarek's mistakes when we're pushing high because we have nothing to to cover him. And I think with, you know, Colwell, he's 19, he's very young, he's, he's growing into the Premier League, it's, it's not going to be easy. Um, and, I, and I think it was just one of those where if we played against Southampton at home, potentially, I, I, you probably would not have been able to mention half of the amount of criticism towards Gilmore, Lamptey, uh, and, and so on, to be honest with you, Colwell included. Because, you know, we say that Colwell's best game was, was Southampton away, but um, notice how that's against probably little opposition and, and people all of a sudden are saying send him back to Chelsea. I just, I just find it kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that's the nail, nail on the head as well for me. I, I literally I remember saying it as well to someone yesterday. It was about, it was about like, you know how after the Southampton game we were raving and, you know, well, well we, we were like, what great performance, you know, we smashed them. Like, they, But we've got to remember that Southampton, let's be frank, they're a pretty poor team at the moment. Mm. And then they're bottom comparison to Southampton. Southampton. Yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. So like, yeah, okay, cool. We, we beat Southampton convincingly and, and we played really well. But then when you play against Arsenal, you sort of get found out, so to speak, because how good, mm. how quality their team is. And, uh, you know, apart from Saliba getting bodied off the, off by 18-year-old, which was class, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm sure we'll get on. <laughs> um, but apart from that, like, you look around that whole team and there is not, for me, a visible weak link, um, really. Yeah. You look through that whole team. So we're coming up against a top quality opposition. And yeah, and it was mad as well. Like we, I, said, I said to you, Ben, didn't I? I was like, we're getting upset. We're losing to Arsenal and we're getting upset. Mm-hmm. And then you were like, oh, it's the way we, we, you know, it's the way we can see the goals, which is fair. But we've got to remember, we're, they're league leaders. Arsenal is seven points clear. <laughs> they're top of the league. Like, this is not just a... Mate, they're better than Man City this year. Like, they, yeah. they're they being chased by City. Haaland is on the case of <laughs> Arsenal. And yeah. we're complaining that our youngsters are losing to them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, exactly. this, is, this is where it comes to me. I, I just feel like it's almost a need for... I don't want to sound like that sort of person that's really boring and needs to take a reality check. But when it comes to this sort of game, you just yeah. you just need to look in the mirror. I think to be fair, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I do one last thing about mistakes, so because I think yeah, like I said, those three of the goals were kind of errors that could have probably been done a lot better. It's just yeah, like is the two Sanchez ones. I think the Marcelli one when he could, well to be fair, Odegaard's ball to Martinelli by the way, unbelievable, so good. Um, but yeah, just like it goes straight at him and it goes under his leg, and you're thinking, oh. Yeah. Could you do better yeah. there? And then obviously again <laughs> conceding in the forty seventh minute straight after half time and it's he's parried it into the ground and, and Katia has just got an easy tap I've, in. I've got a few controversial opinions on this one. And it's probably gonna on, get... I'm just gonna mute my mic one sec. <laughs> 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 just because just because I, I know I know Ryan got uh, got a few critics when he when he uh, says something about Sanchez and Did yeah, 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 I don't know if you remember that, Ryan. Right? Um, right, so these are my, these, this is my, this is my observations from, from, from Sanchez. I think, firstly, first and foremost, he's got no competition. He's just very comfortable. He's like, right, I'm number one. So he doesn't have to worry about any competition. Like, let's be real, Jason Steele's not going to take his number one spot off him. He's quite comfortable, right? So that could lead to complacency. It can lead to some mistakes because he's, you know, he's like, oh, I'm not going to get dropped, right? Similar to how when we had Matty Ryan. And then second of all, I think he's super shaky from from uh, set pieces, like corners. He just doesn't feel me like I 
genuinely get a bit worried that when he comes for stuff, when he comes for corners or comes for crosses, like he just doesn't fill me with confidence as a maybe a, a top quality keeper would. And then thirdly, probably most controversially, um, when people asked, you know, like who would you most likely or, you know, if all the players from our team would leave, like, you know, all the top players like McAllister, Caicedo, et cetera, et cetera. Bobby Sanchez was mentioned. And I genuinely would not be too upset if he left. If it was the, like, a big offer came in, I 34 million. Again. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not being reactionary. I'm just saying, like, as a, if I'm just like seeing, oh, like if the offer came in for Bobby Sanchez. Mm. You'd be upset, million, but the least upset. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I wouldn't, I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, cool, good riddance. But mm. if he was to leave, I wouldn't be devastated as I would be with Caicedo, McAllister, um, who else? Uh, who's been class? Like a dunk. Do you know what I mean? Like something like a, a player that important to our system and our team. I genuinely wouldn't be that upset. That's just my opinions on what I'll let you I'll let you respond to that wrong because it could be fun. <laughs> yeah, ben, yeah, what, <laughs> yeah, Ben, what do you think? <laughs> I see where he's coming from, to be fair. I do get what you're saying. Like if you're if you're if you listen to what he's saying, he's saying that he would be the least upset about Sanchez leave. It's not saying yeah. that's he wants him to go by any means. Because he was mentioning, you know, in that list, I think someone, uh, that FC Lorry that we posted on our Instagram, he mentioned those like six players. It was like, yeah, Caicedo, McAllister, Sanchez. Um, who else was it? A few other players. That, and he was mm. like, all these players have been linked with, you know, moves away or whatever. Um, yeah. So out of that lot, I, I actually don't think Bobby Sanchez is as integral to the, the easy, team. Because it's a goalkeeper, is the most probably the most easiest to replace, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I think it stems back to the complacency thing, like because he's he's out and right number one. He's got no competition. I just feel like is he maybe complacent? Is he is he too resting on his laurels of being number one and taking it for granted? Maybe I, I don't I don't know. It, that's just because mm. I always thought he was good at shot stopping, but they, yeah, those two mistakes when they're like straight at him, you just think you, again we are picking up small things, but those two things yeah. lead to led to a goal, and that's what a goalkeeper's job is. And, 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 and just before people like jump on me, that's not to say I don't rate Bobby Sanchez. I don't think yeah. he's good. Uh, yeah, <laughs> can you see how? Can you see how emotionally scarred we are from the last time we spoke yeah. at Sanchez? We literally have it <laughs> yeah, any, every any, single like, time. Opinions we might have, yeah. we're like we, we caveat it with like yeah. uh, terms and conditions. <laughs> um, no, that, that's, just, that's just my that's just my opinion. Um, on the goalkeeping situation. Yeah. Ryan spoke to his lawyer and he's uh, written up a <laughs> statement and this is hey, what Ryan My lawyer with. is not happy. My lawyer is <laughs> screaming at me. I can hear him in the left, <laughs> the left side of my ear. He's saying, you cannot talk and that's what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, if I speak, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> I, I am in legal trouble. So I'm going <laughs> to sway from this one. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll move on then. We'll move on. Yeah, you don't want to say you. anything? <laughs> Do you think he could have done better? I, yeah, those, those, those two, um, what have see error that you made look I'm happy with the game and I like I like my players so I want to move on for the next game <laughs> All right. Good um, Evan Ferguson okay let's talk about him apparently yeah. he was in Revs last are. night here we are he was Evan in Revs last night celebrating I'll take this one and I love like. that for him yeah and it, <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he obviously got his Premier League goal bonus and he was out spending it probably on Jaeger bombs and Revs not in Shrews yeah, do you see? Yeah, do you Evan. see what Danny BHFC Evan. Danny um, he he DM'd him being like, like congratulations, happy new year, whatever. Um, he was like, please, whatever you do, just stay away from Shush and stay away from uh, Love Island contestants. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, I was like, that's class. Um, Evan, yeah, go if on, you're Ryan. listening, mate. If you're listening, mate, please just don't go to these nightclubs. Don't yeah. go out. Just stay. Just stay at home. Just pretend you've got a COVID right. lockdown and you've got to stay at home. And the only thing you know how to do is you can go to training and and that's it and you've got to go home again right don't go anywhere stay at avoid home, bar 32 please, as well because <laughs> because mate you have the ability to be such a fantastic footballer seriously I, I i love watching him play his goal was well taken he bullied saliba who's meant to be one of the best young players young defenders in the league he bullied mm. him completely it was, it was harland against webster vibes and he he finished it well and i thought not you know, ramsdale it's not, it's not yeah, and it's not unforeseeable either. I mean, it's everyone who's watched Evan Ferguson for sort of the last year has seen that this is going to be coming. He made his debut for in the in the Irish League at fourteen. You know, so anyone that's watched him in his in his career path knew that this was going to happen. Against so Chelsea, when please as well. don't. Yeah, think, don't mess yeah, it up, please. <laughs> yeah, what do you on, on Evan Ferguson, yeah, I, I just I love the fact that um, Deserve brought him on when he did. Like, was it about seventieth minute? So he gave him enough time to yeah. impact the game. 
or maybe his 60th minute, a bit earlier, maybe him and San Miento. Um, and I, yeah, I, I just mm. love the fact that he gave him enough time to impact the game. And it wasn't just like mm. a, a five minute cameo where he can't really, you know, stamp his, his mark on the game. So yeah, like big credit to, to Zerbi. I thought, I thought he, on that, actually, I thought his substitutions were great. Uh, really positive. Yeah. Uh, San Miento, Ferguson came on, Enciso, um who else? All the young boys. It's so good to yeah. see. Yeah, it really yeah. is. Like, it's yeah. so, so good to see. But like, fair play to Deserby. Like, I, I love, I love that he, he brought on the young bucks, and and they all play really well. Like, Samiento gave the, mm. the full backs a torrid time. Uh, Ferguson bullied, like you said, Saliba uh, for that goal, uh, and, he, and his general play was great. His runs off the ball, brilliant. Um, and even in Kiso, in Kiso, however you say it, yes, he, he, yeah. I thought he looked lively as well when he when he came on as well. So and they, they're like, all so direct, which is what yeah. I love. And like yeah. any other manager would look at them, it's like their starting eleven is probably the strongest for us. Any other manager playing against Arsenal or a top team, you're thinking, let me just hold on to my best players on the pitch for, for as long as possible. But I love how Deserbi, yeah, he brings on the youngsters. He kind of looks at a game and goes, you know yeah. what? Probably unlikely that we're going to get something out of it. Good opportunity gives some minutes to the youngsters, and they'll excite the fans. That's exactly what they do. He might not have yeah. scored, apart from obviously Mate, Ferguson, but Sarmiento and Nassiso are still so exciting. And Ferguson could be yeah, so we'll lethal. Get onto Matoma. Like, we'll... so lethal. Mm. Unbelievable. Like, mate, the but... ability we've got in that in that youth team. And actually, just while we're on the youth, Buena Notte signs today, doesn't he, officially? Mm. Um, yeah. So, mate, we, I, I'm excited because I, I trust every South American that says he's a great talent <laughs> because every single South American we get seems to be class. So, Roll him on because I'm excited. I just I love seeing all these sort of 17, 18 year olds coming over, given you know, given the chance to shine. They're not just loaned out and we don't see them for another three years. You know, Deserby said that if there's a player that he believes is good enough, he'll play him, and I, I love that. And but what he said to me was he said the young and younger players. That's such a great thing to say. You know, just not just your twenty year olds, not just your nineteen year olds. He'll look at the sixteen, seventeen year olds and still think if you're good enough, we'll give you a game. And I think that's just yeah. such a great philosophy. Talk, talking of that, Ryan, like I looked at the bench when they were warming up, and I was like, like a few of them, I had to turn around, like, who is that? Like, because I think it was Moran uh, was yeah. on the bench, and then and there was a few. I just think, and I was, yeah, and I was just be like, who are these on the bench as well? I think. Yeah, it's, it's mad. It I was like, sense. that's class. Um, and the fact that I think that's a testament to, like you said, Ryan, like to the Zerbi and the the team that they're they're giving these kids, like just to be on the bench. Imagine it, the the experience you get yeah. being around the first team, seventeen years it's, old. Yeah, Imagine. 17 years old at the Amex, warming up in front of that crowd. And potentially, with the way his derby is going, you might get some minutes on the pitch. Yeah, so, it must, yeah. Be so, must be so exciting because yeah. you think, like, yeah, like you're looking at Moran getting on the bench for the, I think, probably like third Premier League game in a row or whatever. You yeah. think there's a really, really good chance of me getting minutes here yeah. rather than just going back into mm. the under 23s. And it's probably it's going to make them train yeah. better and play even better. Yeah. Uh, but on Facundo Buenonote, or however you pronounce his name, Carlos Tevez, who was his manager at Rosario, I think, he's saying that he's the next oh, yeah. Messi. So, so that's anything to go by. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, he must be probably... Good on, he must be good on FIFA, right, Ben? Or... Uh, I, I tell you what, I actually haven't, I haven't, I haven't actually played them yet. Oh, okay. I'm, no, he's meant I'm, to be I'm good on, on FM, actually, what I've seen. Yeah, I've got him on FM. FM. I've got him um, on <laughs> FM because I've just got into January in my FM. But yeah, I look forward yeah, to using it. Just quickly yeah. before we move on to the, uh, the offside. Well, I suppose it ties in nicely. Matoma... Like yeah, that, basically cool forget the up because he's just so good, I think. And it feels like, yeah, because he's so good, we don't really like focus on him a lot. But he was just so good yesterday. Like he's, <laughs> you can't like, say any other words, can you? He's just like so absolutely good. superb. I actually love him. I think a little bit. I think I've got a bit of a man. <laughs> um, yeah, like, well, I, said, I get I you. Like, yeah, yeah. He's just, he just, he just seems like a really nice guy as well. <laughs> I just want to like go for dinner with him and just like, you're right, mate. How's it going? Yeah, and then. I'd, I'd buy football. him anything he wants. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <he's... laughs> yeah. I'll pay. I'll pay. <laughs> I'll pay. I know I'll you're on, like. I'll take it to Selfridges. I'll, I'll pay. I'll pay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take it to Nando's. I'll spend big money on him. You have whatever you want on yeah. the menu. Uh, yeah, but no, no yeah, he's, Matt, a, he's, a, he's a class act, mate. Quality. He's so good. Like any any team he comes up against, he seems to just make the defender have a really tough time. Of course, Ben White was up against him for a bit before he got taken off. And he was giving Ben White a pretty tough time, which was, I saw Ben White walking away after he'd been done a few times. And he was just like, what's going on? Like, who, who is this bloke? Um, and that's pretty much how any, every Brighton fan reacted when we signed him. Like, who the hell is this bloke? But mate, like, doesn't that just excite you? Like, I know it's, I know I don't want to just speculate over January because I know it can be detrimental to actual transfers. But almost every single time that we sign someone that's like 18, you expect them to be good in about in the next two years like you mm. know like when we signed Caicedo in 21 
you're a bit like, you know, it's, it's in the middle of January 21. You're like, OK, we're not going to see him. And all of a sudden, he's just so key and so brilliant for us. And he didn't even really set it alight while he was on on, on his loan. Oh, so he's bottom of the league I just, Belgium, wasn't he? I just find he? that so exciting. When he's at beer yeah. shoot or whatever. It's just mad. Actually Very mad. So, I I'm, I'm, mate, anyone we sign, anyone that we, we use, I'm, I'm just excited for because... As I say, I just love seeing these young players. I, I just think it's such a great way to play football. It's such a great way to spectate football. I just, I just love it. I think it's great. I really do. Mm. He kind of, he's kind of the fact that they're all so exciting is kind of overshadowing the fact that maybe Trossard. There's a few people around me were saying that he kind of looks his head's down a bit, looking like he's kind of ready for a move now. Ryan, do you reckon Trossard? Do you reckon this is just he's just out of form when people <sighs> are like putting things together, yeah. or do you actually think he's he's thinking about a move away? My trouble with Trossard is you can't read him. He, he's one of the very few players, very few people, to be honest, that I know that I can't read. And I, I just can't judge whether he's ever happy or whether he's ever down or if he's looking at the floor or if he's just buzzing. Like He doesn't seem to smile. He doesn't have much emotion. So That's you so can't true. really judge him. So, I, I mean, you can't read him. Uh, he, you know, next week against Everton, he might come out and be fantastic and be man of the match, you know? So I just... I can't say that Trossard wants to go. I can't say that Trossard's off form. But all I can say, I suppose, actually, yeah, he is off form. He's, he's certainly not doing it at the moment. But um, he's one of those players that will do it in a big game when it, when it needs to happen. And potentially Everton could be a chance for him, I guess. Does that go back to, you know, how we, like before he hit his like five to ten game run where he was unbelievable. Do you remember, we always, we always use the question, is he Mr. Consistent? And I suppose, like, yeah. I think he's answering it again. Like, I don't think he is, <laughs> He just, he, he, yeah. he does. He's like a roller. He's on a roller coaster. Like he has his extreme. When he's down, highs. he's down. If you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Like he has his extreme highs, and then he has his extreme lows. And I feel like he yeah. can never just be in the middle and just sort of trudge along. He's either got to be extremely good or extremely bad. And I don't know. It's frustrating. It seems bad. like the World Cups had a bad effect on him though, because obviously they they had. Yeah. I imagine he probably had high hopes of that World Cup, and he's come yeah. back. Yeah. Arguably, his last, poor one. Definitely. Arguably, it could be arguably his last World Cup as well. Because he what, could be twenty nine. Is he? No, I think he's like twenty six, isn't he? Twenty six. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. Oh, but it depends. Oh, yeah, seven, he might not. I he's think, got, seven. Yeah. Oh, he got. He got time. But he might not be that. Yeah. But still, though, he might not be getting in the team in the Belgian team in four years' time. Yeah. You know, the talent yeah. that they have. It's, he's a strange he player. Might, like, might well be. You know, when you see Matoma, for example. I mean, there's there's very few times I see him play that I'm thinking, oh my god, okay, is Matoma off it? You know, the only time was really Charlton, and, and then everyone was off it there anyway. So you can't even mm. judge him in that game. So uh, with Matoma, you're like, you know, he's going to take on players. He's going to try his best. He's going to keep running. And that's what you want from an attacker. You know, Ferguson, for example, he doesn't stop running. He keeps he keeps going, no matter even if he's not winning the ball. Um, you know, at Southampton away, I remember specifically, he only had five, six minutes. And he's still running at the at the goalkeeper every single time and hope that he gets a block on that ball. And the one time he did, he celebrated it like he scored a goal. And for me, you want players like that that's going to keep running these things down because... Yeah. You know, with Trossard, he's a, he's a little striker and you want a little striker to be constantly running and making runs. Maybe he was and I didn't see it, so I can't say that. But um, maybe, I, I don't know, it just didn't seem to really work for him again. And, and it's one of those where he's had four games probably now where, you know, he might, as you say, Maz, he's, he's missed the consistent, inconsistent, up and down. You know, he might blow hot on, on Tuesday night and, and we'll be saying how much of a great player he is for us again. So yeah, it's, please, hard to, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. Hmm. Yeah, but no, agree. Going into Tuesday night then, obviously, unless there's anything more, sorry, about just, Arsenal we want to mention. Just quickly, just the Matoma yeah. offside. What, oh. Just quickly, we just oh, go yeah. around. Oh, yeah. What we thought, like, obviously, it's a clear cut. Well, <clears throat> by the letter of the law, it's a clear cut offside, right? But is it like, <clears throat> my, my only thing is, and, and I tweeted it and we, we spoke about it earlier, it was like, yeah, he hasn't gained an advantage by running back, if that makes sense. If anything, it's further, away, it's further away from the ball. Yeah, <laughs> but, I suppose, but then I suppose he, the more I'm sort of thinking out loud here, I suppose he has though, because then by running back, he's got himself in a position to then go again, if that makes sense. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think it's a grey area. It's one of those, maybe it needs a bit more definition of like, if mm. a player is... I don't know. Yeah, because it's still subjective. There needs know. to be some sort of explanation, I think. And there needs to be almost, with VAR, and actually I'll mention one more thing in a minute, in a minute but one thing with VAR that really frustrates me is the linos almost seem to get away with it now. So, you know, you, you don't raise your flag and it doesn't matter because it's not your fault because they'll check it. 
And it feels yeah. it feels like you you may as well not actually have any linesmen anymore, to be honest with you, because yeah. it, there's no point. Uh, you may as well just leave it every single time to go to VAR. But if if you really can't tell at the time, like how they apply with pretty much every other offence in the book apart from offside, then if you couldn't tell at the time, is it a clear and obvious mistake? No. So I don't know. I, I just there needs to be some sort of clarity over benefit of the doubt where that's given and 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 whether what clear and obvious actually means because that's a subjective phrase in itself uh, yeah. we seem to be going around in circles i mean as we say that at charlton there was no var obviously so it's you know probably missed it because there's two or three penalties that could have been uh yeah. both ends probably a red card that could have been as well so you know maybe we do need var but if you're going to use it it's being used so wrong and uh, all the time that's happening it's just going to keep 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 making this co- conversation come up every single time but I think with the with the offside, it needs to be, you know, where's the where's the advantage gain? Give better almost angles so you've got a, a straight angle, not this stupid thing where it's up here because that's ridiculous. You can't tell what's offside from from top right corner because it's going to look different to how it actually is. There should be a, a linesman's view almost. That's what they had in the what World Cup was it. good. What they've got in the Champions League you know? is good, isn't it? Yeah, the, the, the World uh, Cup the one. Graphics. Um, and actually, Ben, just just while on that. Uh, uh, I'll shut up a minute, but the one, the one thing while you're on that is the added time. It's ridiculous. The amount of time you lose in the game and, and, off, and World Cup got it spot on. It's yeah. the one thing. Yeah, it's probably the, one, one of modern the few thing things I agree with. Added, yeah. Um, yeah, and it, it's, it's absolutely perfect. Why has no one thought of that before? Proper added time. How much time should be given? I mean, in imagine how alone, Jurgen Klopp will react though, alone, Ryan. Imagine Jurgen Klopp yeah. and Guardiola be living. Well, they've got to play ten extra minutes every then. single time. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Stop wasting Villa, time. Villa's, Villa's out of time game, will be about half an hour. I was about yeah. to say, Emmy Martinez. Exactly. Emmy Martinez against us the other week, uh, before the World Cup. Yeah. That was atrocious. Would have been about half an hour added on. Yeah. 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 Mate, that game, in alone, in the, in the Villa game, the, the ball was in play for 53 minutes. And in the, in the game yesterday... There's there's at least that amount of time I reckon because there's just so much time wasting and so much. I mean Arsenal every time they scored a goal. I don't want to sound like some sort of old Brexit footballer here, but every single time they scored a goal, they did a little huddle for about two yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. not getting added back. It's it's infuriating thinking about it. And I just think how how can that stand? How can you give six minutes at a time when you've wasted at least ten? At least ten. Yeah, I was going to say that's ten. Yeah, that six minutes because it you know? could have easily been. 15, like... Could have been yeah. 20 and I wouldn't have questioned it, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the first half, the first half was six, sorry, three, and that was probably at least six or seven. Yeah. And I just think, really, like, I know the first half wasn't good and, I, and we probably wouldn't score, we probably would have conceded again. But I'd rather <laughs> we conceded again in, in a fashion that was fair because, I, I don't know, I just, I just find it ridiculous. At least put some sort of deterrent out there to stop these players yeah. from wasting so much time because no, it, it does make it difficult to watch, especially when you go to these games every week. I mean, I don't know. Just it just makes it tough to watch. Let's uh, say uh, let's say we did uh, that goal was given and we did get a third. Do you reckon we could have nicked a fourth of the minutes remaining? It would have been actually, good. It would have been a yeah. very insane to watch. I, actually I think do. We would have. I actually think we would have. I do. Been. They were on the ropes. Matoma was on they it. I reckon Matoma was on that trick, and I reckon he would have got it. I do. They're he was right on it. As soon as he scored, he was. Yeah, a great man. He's written he in the stars. It. So yeah, I think we would have gone. Yeah. Yeah, and so. also shout out to all the Japanese fans that were there. I've seen so many more Japanese fans every single time. I know. It's, yeah, it's great to see. It's really great to see. Um, I love the Japanese But no, that, that was Arsenal. Great. We played top of the league. We gave a good account of ourselves with a younger team, like Ryan said earlier in the podcast. And the only thing you could ask more is a win, but you can't have a win every single week. You can't play Southampton every single week. It's giving me a hot head thinking about that yeah. stupid <laughs> time rule now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking about the time, we've only got a few minutes left, but we all cover our game against Everton. Uh, we're going to be playing against Neil mm. Mope, which will be interesting yeah. to see if he does get some minutes. <laughs> oh, look at how they butchered my boy. <laughs> oh, they've ruined oh, him. Oh, it's Neil. never, it's not uh, sunny on the other side. The grass isn't always greener, but obviously he left for game time, didn't well, he? Well, um, isn't that right, Graham? You just drawn with Nottingham Forest, one all. Yeah. Oh, did they actually draw it? Yeah, one all finish. Sorry, oh, come So um, the grass isn't always greener. Basuma got booed off the pitch for Tottenham yeah, earlier. So yeah. <laughs> It is bad out there, ladies and gentlemen. And and Caicedo, if you are watching, which you're probably not. Caicedo, if you're watching, um, who else are there? Alexa McAllister, if you're watching. Just the whole team. Don't leave, mate, because you're better off here. You really are. I'll tell you what, we've got a few um, of the youth team that watch us, so they can send a message to Evan Ferguson. Yeah. And Evan Ferguson can then pass message on to the senior lads. Sarmiento loves us, 100%. 
Yeah, so boys, <laughs> the younger boys will be watching, uh, pass the message on. That'd be much appreciated. Mm. In a few years' time, we'll have the whole Get team. Out there. Uh, yeah, but no, Everton. Everton, uh, yeah. I'll, I'll are we confident? With... They had a really, really good result against City. They just drew one all with Manchester I was, City. I was yeah. just about to say. Defended it yeah, incredibly. Yeah. I think they're going to be on a high going into this. Based off, yeah, drawing with the uh, the champions of England. Um, and arguably, you know, well, just part Arsenal, the best team in England. So, mm. yeah, they'll, they'll be buzzing going into this. Um, but I still think if we have McAllister back, Caicedo's, uh, I believe, is going to be back because there's only one game ban. Uh with with I would love to see Gilmore because I, I agree with Ryan. I thought Gilmore played really well. Like he had his moments where he Thank didn't look you. great, but I thought I thought he was yeah, I agree. thought he was really good uh, on the ball. He was fantastic. Just maybe Mads, off the do ball. Do you agree? Yeah, not so much. Sorry. Um, do you think that a bit like a and the way I look at it is you got Evan Ferguson like your old Glenn Murray, and you've yeah. got Gilmore like your old Dale Stevens. He'll do he'll do his job. He's an old fashioned midfielder. Will clear up stuff and will get no praise for it just because he doesn't pass forwards. And I think that. We need almost that sort of guy to just sit there, clean up the stuff, and then spray it out to to Caicedo or whoever it might be to then go and use their flair and ability because McAllister. it's almost like that missing piece that you need. I I, I yeah. think anyway. I, I think that they would work well. That's just I me. would love to see a, a midfield three at Everton of Gilmore, Caicedo, McAllister. I think that would work really well because yeah, Caicedo will, will will do all the industrious work. You know, all that running, all that energy. Uh, McAllister's obviously a, like can, you know we've seen him for us and Argentina yeah. what he can do um, and then let's him play in the eight as well which I think he wants to do yeah. Yeah. You know, he, I think yeah. he wants to play a little bit further up and it lets McAllister be box to box lets Caicedo to be box to box which that yeah. still keeps that sort of double pivot thing which everyone loves to talk about and then you keep Caicedo uh, sorry Caicedo um, Gilmore perhaps a little bit deeper just just in front of the defence, just to spray the balls around. Because he, he's clearly can pass the ball. My God, he can yeah. pass the ball. If yeah, there's one thing you can say about Gilmore, he's a great pass. Um, yeah. And, you know, he's, he's decent in the tackle. I, I want to see him a bit more, if I'm honest. 100%. Yeah, so I, I think I think with that midfield trio um, and with Matoma leading the line with, um, well, whoever, whoever, oh, you know. The that was what I was going to ask. Yeah, Ferguson, do, you reckon, to be honest. do you reckon Ferguson Ferguson's, comes in yeah. for Trossard? Yeah, do you reckon, mate, will I'll it happen? It or I know you'd, yes. I know we'd like to see it, but do we think Deserby would do it? No, I, I don't think he will, but I would like to see it. Personally, I don't think mm. we'll. Mm. I think we'll a, stick to a strong, his... a strong forward against a D- Everton back yeah. three in it. I think I think he'll stick to the same starting eleven as he did with Arsenal, with the exception of the midfield, where he'll bring back Caicedo and McAllister. If McAllister. Um, but I think the front three will remain the same. I, I believe mm-hmm. uh, going into one more thing, Romero, he'll... Romero for Argentina, Argentina, obviously he played for Spurs today. Um, obviously a day, yeah, day earlier. Yes. So, that's what I was going to say. One chance. more thing. Alexis was flying back with Buenonote. They flew back together yesterday. Yeah. Or the other day before. Yeah. Right? And the way I look at it is I, I love him to have his time off and he, he deserves it, right? World Cup win and all that. 100% agree. The only thing that maybe would made us look a little bit stupid is if that game then went 4, 5, 6, 0, right? And we, and we really got obliterated because as I said, the first half of the gaps were there. There's no hiding that. Second half, luckily, Gilmore grew into the game, etc. As you've mentioned before, but the way I look at it is, if we did go and lose five or six, or even four nil, you would have been saying, "Why didn't we recall McAllister sooner?" And I, I really think that because it would, have, especially with Caicedo, out. if Caicedo wasn't out, mm. I can understand it. But with Caicedo, out, I would have, I would have hoped a little bit more that McAllister would have been in and around the squad, even on the bench, just just because we lost Caicedo. Because I, I just find that. Almost a little bit too much leeway because when you're in was, need, I, I think he needs to be back. Yeah, I think it was because it, it was Everton. Pretty, I want him back. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely, I want, Everton, I want him back for sure. But I think the for the Arsenal game, I think it was way like way ahead. As soon as he won it, they agreed the date of when he'll be back. So yeah, I think that's it, the it trouble. Set, yeah, it was just set in stone. I only like, mean because of the extreme circumstances with Caicedo. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I would have perhaps if we if we did. Luckily, as I say, Gilmore did grow into it, and we were okay. But if we did go and lose that by a fair amount, it would have it would have begged that question a lot more. I think um, a player for Everton. I'll go first. Player for Everton that um, you're worried about the most, if, if there is one. Lol, um, because they, you know the last last five games they drew against yeah. City, lost yeah, against Wolves, lost against Bournemouth, lost against Leicester, drew against Fulham. Um, Damari Gray in the recent games got an absolute worldie. Uh, he tore us apart tore us last apart, year yeah, at the Amex. Uh, tore us apart. Mm-hmm. He was he's so quick. Mm. He's very good. Very similar to Gabriel Martinelli. So it'll be interesting to see how we deal with that. 
but that's that yeah. was when we uh, played them at home, uh, at home and we lost two 0 I believe. Um, when we played them away, which funnily enough was literally beginning of the year as well, second of January last year, Alexis scored two. Who obviously we've just been talking about. But yeah, yes. I'll go back to my original question. Tomorrow, great for me. Exciting yeah. player for them. Dangerous for us. What about you, Maz? Yeah, exactly the same. Damari Gray. I, I I don't really see any other massive. Obviously, Neil Mope. He, it'll be the perfect game for him to oh, score because sure. it's just be. like you know, yeah, yeah. It's Neil Mope. He's come against his old side. Um, it's not not that he'll be like, oh, I want to score against Brighton because you know, blah blah. It will just be because. Well, he's going to run to the away fans and then go. Shh. Yeah. He's oh, gonna, mate. It's imagine. inevitable. It's imagine. inevitable. And I will love it. I will love it at the same time. It's yeah, gonna, it's gonna happen. I, I genuinely think it's gonna happen. It's really annoying. And I, and I said it when he left, and I thought he didn't get treated well by the fans. Whatever you say, he didn't get treated well by the fans. Whether he's a great player or not, it didn't go down well for him with the fans. A lot of fans gave him a lot of abuse, right? And he will be wanting to score. And, and you can't blame the guy. You can't blame him. You, if, if he scores and he celebrates, I do not. I I won't hide, hold anything against it because, to be honest with you, I'd probably do exactly the same thing after reading social media between 2019 to yeah. 21. I'd probably do exactly the same thing. I'll go right up to the Brighton fans, do that too. So I could see it. I, I the game will be one all. I, the game's one all in the 90th minute. Lampard finally <laughs> <his> <laughs> <on>. Yeah, proper <laughs> Southampton sort of thing. Just goes up yeah. like this, or, yeah. or Crystal Palace. He'll just go like that. Yeah, I, I can just see it happening. It's really annoying, but I, I do think no, no pay is, is the one to worry about, annoyingly. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Gray uh, as my answer. But right. yeah, no pay to score, I reckon. And Alex Awobi, low joke. Oh. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, oh, and um, they've said that he's going to do well. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, he, he, he jinxed it. And um, who yeah. else? Who else have they got? Um, Claire Balding. Um, what's it? Anthony Gordon. <laughs> Anthony Gordon. Yeah. Anthony Gordon, yeah. Well, he, I don't think he played against City, did he? Uh, I don't know, mate. Could be wrong. He's a decent player, actually. He did, he did well against us at the Emir- at the Emirates at the um, Goodison last year. Yeah, he's, um, he's scored two as very well. Very decent player. I'm just, I'm just checking yeah, that. Very yeah, tidy. He, he was even on the bench. Uh, well, against City. Against City, no, I think he's out injured. I think. Fair. Uh, yeah, he wasn't even on the bench. No. Well, unless I'm being blind. Yeah, no, he wasn't even on the bench. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if he's out. <sighs> potentially, he's out. Maybe, maybe he's injured. Yeah, maybe he's injured. All right. But yeah, Demario Gray is probably the only thing. Score predictions, I'm going to say 2-1 Brighton. I think we'll still win. Maz? Yeah, I'm going to go with... I'm going to, go, I'm going to be a bit more confident, I think. 3-1 Brighton. If, on the basis of Caicedo and McAllister being back. 3-1. Mm. Yeah. Okay, if McAllister and Caicedo are back, ignoring Mopé. I, I, I don't know if you can ignore Mopé with a game like this, but ignoring Mopé. Um, I, I'm going to go 2-0 Brighton. Uh, uh, just because I think we've got enough quality to do this. We we know that. And I, I said this to my dad next to me at the game every single time we went forward. I said, we can do it. We know we can do it. We, we don't need to prove we can do it. Uh, we just need a little bit of confidence. And I think that that wasn't there in that first half at Arsenal. And I think that going to going with knowing that you've got those two quality players there, whether we play Gilmore, whether we put Lilana and Gross in there, I don't know, but we'll see. I, I'm going to go 2-0. I think we've got enough quality to... to should mm. be that that Everton side, in my opinion. But we'll see. I'll, I'll be happy and I'll be surprised if Alexis does start or even plays. You know, he flew back yesterday. Let's think he landed today. Maybe trains light session tomorrow back with the team. And the next day we're playing Everton. Well, know, is it on the, are we playing him on Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah, Tuesday, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah he's probably oh, no, it might be Wednesday. Sorry. If it's Wednesday, I'm more hopeful. If it's Tuesday, I'll No, it's probably. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, it's Tuesday, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's probably. I was going to go, and then I was like, "Hang on a minute, it's a Tuesday night." So I still haven't been to Everton away, which is kind of annoying. Mate, uh, never really, never sells out Everton away. Evening. That sounds yeah. not great. Yeah, that it's a long way. way. <laughs> it's a long way. Anyway, um, yes, that has been Seagull Social, the first episode of 2023. Insane. Um, comments below. Yeah. Um, Neil Mope is inevitable. Maybe something like that, yeah. or is that too negative? Oh, no, let's not... No, let's no, no, let's go Matoma or something. Or yeah, who else Ferguson. is good? Ferguson. Ferguson. Matoma or Ferguson, it's got to be. Oh, yeah, do um Ferguson... Yeah, Ferguson. Oh, oh let's give him some love. No, I put, I'm getting Harlan vibes, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I'm getting Harlan vibes, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> nice. Like that, that's good, that's good. <laughs> All right, um, of course, like, subscribe on YouTube if you're listening there. Um, drop us a rating on Spotify and Apple Music or Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to this. And oh, and also follow our socials as well. Um, uh, at Seagull Social on all the yeah. all the platforms apart from 
TikTok. All the stuff are, online. Yeah, apart from right, TikTok. Well, Although some, someone did... Just, just, if just you're listening, write some, it in there somewhere. <laughs> someone made a TikTok for us, didn't we? And then we could never get the actual seagulls oh, yeah, yeah. username. That was annoying. Yeah. Um, I think I did that and I forgot the password or something. Oh, right. I that thought we stuck. thought... Remember we thought I, I it was someone oh, did that I do it? I can't it. remember. I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't remember who it was. Probably anyway. one of us did it at the beginning and they just forgot the pass. I think it was yeah. me. Sounds about right. All right. I'm getting Harlan vibes <laughs> down in the comments and we will see you later vibes. in the week. Yeah, oh, later in the week. Glenn Murray Regen is here, ladies and gents. <laughs> Peace. Peace.